Ecclesiastes chapter 12, the final chapter. All the philosophy, all the things done under the sun, we come now to the conclusion. We said youth, last chapter. Now we do aging. You realize, until you die, I don't care if you're a newborn, you age. Death is the only thing that will stop aging. Or the rapture. Remember now that creator. How can anybody coming out of the public school system do that one. According to the public school system, the Big Bang is their creator. In the days of thy youth. Oh, you mean when they're growing up, they're supposed to be taught about their creator? Aren't you glad you're not going to stand at the great white throne judgment? Being charged with blasphemy for teaching against God to create. Imagine a Christian. Standing before the judgment seat of Christ and teaching the theistic evolution. That's evolution where God, you know, I still get the big check, and I, but I threw God in there. <clears throat> okay. While the evil days come not in the youth. We talked about that last night. Nor the years draw nigh. When thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. The longer we live, the worse it's going to get. That defies evolution. While the sun or light, or the moon, or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. <coughs> In the days when the keepers, all right, here we go. Well, first of all, while the sun and the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, here's your eyesight. In the days when the keepers of the house shall tremble, your teeth. The teeth start chattering. If you get, if you still have teeth. Everything will frighten you. You can't get heat as quick. I think Second Samuel or First Kings, I think, where where they thought they saw a woman for for David to get heat because he was old, and the strong men will bow themselves. Your legs, your backbone. There was a woman, not in that particular age, but she was bowed down. And Jesus said of the devil, of Satan. But bowing down for some are their sign of their, their age, their back. You bow down. Hard to look up when you're bowing down. And I got it wrong by asking, the keepers of the house shall tremble. That is your legs. Apologize for that. It's your legs trembling. Not as strong as they used to be. And the grinders, there's your teeth. Cease. Because they are few. If you were to look in my mouth, who would want to do that? If you were to look in my mouth the, the, the year I came down to Florida and, and look at it today, you see a lot of things missing that were there before. And it happens to all. And those that look out of the windows be darkened your eyesight. 
they go dark. And you will see that when you read the Old Testament. Uh, you read where Jacob, you know, he, he couldn't see Ephraim and Manasseh because his eyesight had gone. That is something that you read with the Old Testament men and women in the Bible. Their eyesight is going dim, going dark. How can you believe in evolution? Everybody's getting better. The door shall be shut in the street. You stay inside. You don't want to go anywhere. When the sound of the grinding is low. Grinding again, you hit your teeth. When the grinding is low. You're not eating as much as you used to eat. He shall rise up at the voice of the bird. Wake up early. The little sounds are disturbing. Lack of sleep and disturbed sleep. You know, the voice of the bird is when, you know, you hear them in the morning. That's early. And the doors of music shall be brought low. You don't want to sing. You don't want to hear people sing. When they shall be afraid of that which is high, afraid of heights, slips and falls. Can be a quite burdensome if you're an old age. Stairs are hard to climb. You know, when you fall, if you're old, I mean, your hip, your knees. And fear shall be in the way. There's fear. Of things as you get older. The almond tree shall flourish. White hair. The almond tree has a beautiful white. But your hair has become white. And desire shall fail. No lust. Second Samuel nineteen thirty four. Because men goeth to his long house. The grave. A lot of people have been in the grave for a long time. The grasshopper shall be a burden. Little things will bother you. Tiny little things. Because man goes to his long home. And the mourners, the funeral, go about the street. Or ever the silver cord be loose, or the golden bowl be broken, you know, it's untied, it's broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, no use. You go to the fountain or the well, hey, there's a bucket over there. I, I guess I, I, you, you lower it down, you get water, and you realize it ain't holding no more water. bladder you can't hold your water all night long or the wheel broken at the cistern there's, there's no traveling there's no use there's no work the parts are there 
but you can't do nothing with them. Silver cord be loose, I mean, you just untie it. You know, the marriage has been ended because of death. Widow. A golden bowl is broken. How do you break gold? That is just, that is just a bowl, I guess, it's been used and used and used and used. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. Oh, look at that. Solomon believed in the creation, Genesis. God said you'll return to dust, Genesis 3.19. <coughs> Solomon believed in what God said. A king, a philosopher, believe in the creation account and what God said. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. There's your body. The spirit shall return unto God who gave it. There's your spirit. And guess what he says about the soul? He doesn't know. And I told you, they knew about hell, lightly. They didn't know about Abraham's bosom. But in the law, you could not have a surety of your soul and of your sins being washed. You're, you were flip-flop as far as your soul condition. If Demas did everything he done he is supposed to do, and under the law died and left Paul, or left Paul and died and stopped serving, where would Demas be? We don't know. So the eternal is not spoken about in this book. Don't make it an eternal book. Vanities of vanity save the preacher all is vanity. And not saying anything about the eternal soul. The spirit and the body is vanity. Not the soul. Moreover, because the preacher was wise. He still taught the people knowledge. Look at that. The king on the throne taught his people. The throne did not go to his head. The wives did, but not the throne. Yea, he gave good heed, and sought out, and set in order many proverbs. And we studied one, some of his proverbs in the previous book. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, proper words. And that which was written was upright, even words of truth. Sanctifying through thy word, thy word is true. You can learn much through this book of Ecclesiastes. You can learn a lot about life, what we just read. You can go for all, you can go for all the gusto, you can go for all the riches, you go for the highest point of all the earth, and what's it going to do? You're going to die.
You know, he didn't say anything about witnessing. I mean, we read into it when witnessing. He didn't say anything about going to the tabernacle. He left the service to God and for God out. And what is it? Death. Service without God and for yourself is death. The words of the wise are as gold. And that's a long stick with a pointed end for prodding animals. You know, that animal, if he's starting to go off where he's not supposed to be going, you take the stick and you poke him. Get him back where he's going. Ow! You know, sometimes we need an ow! We're going to make a step out the wrong way. Keep going. Don't don't stall. You're gonna you're gonna start a bottleneck. Keep going. It's not a time to stop. As nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. We are his sheep. He told Israel in John chapter ten. One shepherd. That's interesting. And further, by these, my son, my son, Rehoboam, we kept seeing that in Proverbs, be admonished, for making many books there is no end. Does that sound like a close to another book that we read in the Bible? If all the things that Jesus Christ would have done, you couldn't contain the books. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. You know, if you keep studying, keep studying, keep studying, and don't do what you study, what's it going to get you? You know, I can study everything and anything on how to carve animals. Cows, bulls, pigs, fowls, deer, antelope. I can study, study, read, read, go to school, go to school, read, school, videos, school, read, school. If I never do it. It's just weariness of flesh. You know, there are people today and the philosophers of age gone by. And it tells you in the book of Acts that there are people who just do nothing but to hear new things. Are lazy bums. Solomon wasn't a lazy bum philosopher. He went out and built things. He went out and got things. He went out and set up things. He worked. There are people today who are in school and only means for them to be in school because somebody is supporting them while they're in school. And what learns it going to be? The most stupidest people I know have gone to school and college and don't know nothing. And you can't tell them nothing. But they get all the money, yes. But I know the way of life. I know what tomorrow holds. And pretty much I know how to do things right. And you dealt with people who have been boss over you and management and all that. And they, they tell you something. And you know what? It's. It's stu you got to do what they tell you, but it's stupid. Imagine a government we are in today telling you that we've got this program. It is so great and so wonderful, and people are just signing up left and right, and it costs more money than it ever did. They don't know.
Now, as we close off this book and say goodnight on this book, wait a minute, no, hold on, we've got two more verses. Two verses that philosophy does not want you to know. Two verses that science doesn't want you to read. Two verses that the public school system does not want to teach their children. Two verses that are never found written in college. Two verses that are probably not found in churches. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let's conclude this whole book. Twelve chapters. And we're going to conclude this book. And the prince and the princess lived happily ever after. And the cowboy rode off with his horse. With his Indian side. Let's hear the conclusion. The end. Fear God. That was the beginning of Proverbs chapter 1. Out of the philosophy and all the vanities of vanities. Of all that's under the sun. Solomon says, all right, everyone gather around me. You, the Hayward family, gather around and read what I have to tell you, my conclusion, the whole thing. Those that are out there in video land and out there in MP3 land. And those that have read, read through their Bible. Gather around. I'm going to say something important. Ready? There was a commercial that when I grew up with, and somebody spoke, everybody listened. Man, that guy wasn't a Bible follower and loved the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he talked something with money and, and, and stocks. And so I don't remember. Who cares? Solomon. Fear God. What don't you understand? What can't you understand? How hard is that? Again, a little bit after I was out of high school and all that, there was a thing going on, and no fear. No, it was stickers on. It was a sneaker. No fear. Violating the Bible. And how many Christians protested that sticker? That teaching. And how many people do you see just walk out in front of your car because they're in a crosswalk? They have no fear of pain in the hospital bill. I'll just sue you. What if the person driving the car can't pay the bill? You think just because you had a lawsuit and the judge says you have to pay, if you ain't you can't pay anything like that, and somebody's it's gotta go back to your court. It's not going to do you a lot of good if you spend two, three, four, many, all your years of your life in a hospital bed. It ain't going to do you good if you follow the book of Ecclesiastes and die. And go off to hell. Satan doesn't want you to fear. They don't fear parents today. Satan has no fear of God. You realize in Genesis 1, um, uh, Job 1 and 2, man, he just walks right up to God. See my servant Job? Well, yeah, you know about your servant Job. Let me tell you something. You know, I wonder if the angels could be so bold and they've been with God longer. If not before they come up to the throne, <coughs> did they not bow the knee first? Satan just walks right up there and doesn't bow the knee. And keep his commandment. 
Are you saying I keep his commandments? Well, Ecclesiastes says keep his commandments. Ecclesiastes is in the Old Testament, my friend. It is a book under the law. Solomon built the temple. But we do have commandments as Christians. Love the brethren. All right? Fear God and love the brethren. If you want to put it New Age Church Christian application. For Solomon, it was obey Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and Numbers. Oh, man. How would you find All right? A book written... 977 years before Jesus Christ, he said, for this is the whole duty of man. Christ hasn't been born. A man under the law. After 12 chapters, fear God, keep his commandments, that is the duty of man. You have to keep the law. You have to obey. You know, we're given a free will. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. I don't want to. All right. You lose rewards, but you don't lose your soul. Love the brethren. I don't want to love them. All right. You lose rewards, but you don't lose your soul. Bring me a tenth of every cattle you got. Count them. Make sure it's a tenth. I don't want to do that. Die and go to hell. Appear before me three times in the year. Under the law. I don't want to do that. Die and go to hell. Let me ask you a question under the law. It's one to three times a year, and the guy is going to Jerusalem, but dies on the way. What state does he drop, die in? How about that one for the law? Mm -hmm. He just bought a house, but then put a battlement around the roof. How does he die if he died? Verse 14. Can we get by 13? 13. Fear God. Obey God. 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Now you can put that down on the Christian. 1 Corinthians 3. Any man build silver, gold, precious stone, wood, hay, or stubble? The work shall be tried by fire. Matthew 12 says, By every word man shall speak, he shall be given account thereof. We read, was it last night? And the night I read something, one might said, Your thoughts. You will give an account for your thoughts. Look at this one. With every secret thing. Gabriel Angel, did you get that? Yeah, I got that all down. Okay. Date it and close the book. Every secret thing. I, I'm a killjoy. I'll admit it in the sense of the Bible. I am against, and I don't want ever, anyone ever to throw me a secret party. Why not? Did you know the lies and stuff you got to tell to have that secret party? You know, well, the day that thing, you got you got to get the person. You got to lie to the person to get into the building where where you're having it. And if he's suspicious of anything, you got to tell a lie to cover up what you're doing. A surprise party. That's a secret thing. 
And Solomon tells you, I may be going overboard, okay, fine. I mean, that's my conscience. And I've been in churches, two of them, that I know of. That my wives have been asked to join the, the secret ladies club or something. I forget what it's called. Why is it secret? And then at Christmas, a time that's not anything biblical, these women, you know, the secret Santa. And Solomon says, every secret thing will come into judgment before God. You know, what your husband don't know, what your wife don't know, what your children don't know, what the parents don't know, what the pastor doesn't know, what the congregation don't know. <coughs> Did I leave anybody out? God knows. Whether it be good. Or whether it be evil. Now Proverbs 15.3 says. In the eyes, of the, the eyes of the Lord. In every place behold the evil. And the good. Over here he puts the good. And the evil. So these two verses together. He puts it. Both ways. And take it with um, 2 Timothy 4, 7, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, and Matthew 12, 36, about the mouth. Now, to conclude this entire book, Jesus Christ has not been born. He has not gone to Golgotha. He has not been resurrected. The disciples have not met in the room in Acts 2. There is no Acts. There is no Saul or Paul. So you can't throw this book entirely all into the church age and church dark. Now, we went through the book. We studied 12 chapters. And we went through what for a Christian. We went through what was the law. But this book, this book speaks of entirely of everything that you can see with your eyeballs, and it stops at the grave. Death. Okay. Lord willing, we pick up next time the Song of Solomon. Death. All right. Wait a minute. You got Proverbs, a man of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You got Ecclesiastes, death. Song of Solomon, you got a bride that's seeking her groom, and he will come. Look at that. Look at that. After death, what comes? For the Christian, the Lord Jesus Christ. For the Jew, the Messiah. But the Song of Song would be God as Israel's bride. You can't go jumping into any chapter, any book, or any verse. I'm going to pick this verse out, and I'm going to love it. You can't. Absolutely not. You better study the text. You better study the context. You better get it all. Because I can go through... The, the book of Ecclesiastes, I can start my own occult. I can start a philosophy. But the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 